Hello, my name is Matthias and welcome to the weekly wildcard draft where I try to select what I think is the best team to have or squad to have in Fantasy Premier League going forward in the next four to five game weeks. And this does not mean that you should use your wildcard this game week, although it is quite popular to, to do so if you do have your wildcard, wildcard still. But if you're like me, you've already used your wildcard and you can't use it. But this video is more just to show you what is the ideal squad to have going forward. And, uh, and yeah, I'm going to show you going from player number one, which is the player I think is the most important player to have currently, all the way up until game week or game week, the player number 15 in this squad. And that's going to be the player that I'm the most unsure about in my squad. So let's just go straight ahead and look at the first player. And that is the same player as last week. That is Marcus Rashford as number one. And that's because he is the best captain's option this game week. And Ben and I did have amazing fixtures going forward as well. Even in the immediate future, they are pretty good. You can see Everton at home in game week, game week 20 or game week 30, I mean, is also pretty good. Along with the double game week in 29 and Nottingham Forest in game week 31 as well. Should be noted, they have a blank in game week 32 and that's going to be a theme in this, uh, this squad. There's going to be a lot of players blanking in game week 32 because... Uh, this is sort of made with a free hit in Gimmick 32 in mind. But if you don't have a free hit left, I'm going to, at the end of the video, talk about some players you should own if uh, if you don't have the free hit that actually play in Gimmick 32 and are also good options until then. But for now, Rashford is by far the best option, I think, because he's going to be the main captain, the captain's option in this current game week, Gimmick 29. And Man United, like I said, great fixtures in the immediate future in basically throughout the whole season for the rest of the season man united are going to have amazing fixtures especially if you have that free hitting every 32 and uh yeah the second player on this squad is also another man united player and that is bruno fernandez there's quite a quite a debate going on in uh, fpl in the fpl community right now about whether you should bring in fernandez in for someone like saka and personally, I think you should. I'm going to talk a bit more about Saka eventually later on in the video, but I think Fernandes on his own is just an amazing player and an amazing FPL prospect. We also got to remember that two years ago, he was the best FPL player out of every single one because he was playing so well for Man United and scoring penalties and was generally a really good player. He wasn't quite the same when uh, Cristiano Ronaldo was part of the squad, but this season he has shown his class once again in terms of FPL. He's on penalties and uh, scores a lot of goals in general for Man United. Scored two goals in the cup game last time around when uh, when they played with uh, more when they played against nine men and with, against Fulham. He scored a penalty that they got and he also scored a, a late goal as well. Even though he was playing a bit further backward, but I don't think the Casemiro suspension is going to affect Fernandez that much. He was really dangerous the three games. Casemiro was out earlier in the season, and I think Fernandes is just an amazing player to have, and especially considering Man United fixtures, their double game fixtures in 34, game, double game fix, fixture in game 37, and even the immediate future, immediate pick, the fixtures as well are looking really good for Man United. So I think Fernandes is is a really good player to own, and I would highly suggest that you uh, you buy him this game week if you don't have him already. And a lot of people don't have him already. But moving on, we have another player. This is not a Man United player. It is Leicester Madison. He actually has a fixture in game week 32 as well. So if especially if you're not on a free hit, Madison is uh, somewhat essential in your squad. Even if you have your free hit, the upcoming fixtures, the double game week is the best of the bunch, really. Crystal Palace away and Aston Villa at home. Sure, Aston Villa have been decent lately, but that is against lesser teams. And even though Leicester are or a relegation candidate, they are really good offensively, so I still think Madison can produce a lot of goals or assists against Aston Villa. We're still waiting for that huge haul for Madison, the, the, those of us who have owned Madison since uh, the Game Week 26 wildcard, like, like I did. Um, we've been waiting for a huge haul for Madison. He got an assist last time, but um, he still has so much more potential to get way more points. He, he might be on penalties for Leicester, you don't really know. Iannaccio has taken some penalties, Tielemans has taken some penalties, Vardy obviously is not playing regularly at the moment, he's usually taking penalties for Leicester. So he might be on penalties, but even beyond that he's just creating so many chances and looking so good lately. Even for England against Ukraine, he created five chances and, and looked really good, so I think Madison's going to push on and uh, be spurred on by, given the chance, by being given the chance for England as well and just show his worth in the league as well, which is a crucial crucial part of the season for Leicester as well, playing against several relegation candidates. So I think Madison is, is going to be really great in uh, in the immediate future. 
Next one up, another Man United player and another new guy in the squad because Man United didn't have a fixture last uh, game week. But now they have a double game week fixture and, like I said, amazing fixtures going forward. Some people have preferred to go for David De Gea in goal, but I think Shaw... I have uh, I have done the mistake of not bringing in Shaw earlier in the season and being punished for it massively. He's such a good offensive threat as well, and he can get assists, he can get goals, he can get way more bonus points than David De Gea as well. So I think Shaw is, is clear and above a better pick than uh, David De Gea is for Man United. Um, so yeah, he's another Man United player and another super good player to have in your squad basically and the best defender for me by a small distance we'll get to see the the second defender pretty soon but first we're going to talk about some uh, forwards we got another player marked with green texts and that means he's new in the squad as you can see in last week's weekly wildcard drafts none of Isaac Fernandez or Fern- or Shaw were in the squad Shaw and Fernandez because they didn't have a fixture that game week but Isaac was uh, was not in in the squad because there were some doubts about his playing time and uh, I didn't have him in the weekly wildcard squad or weekly wildcard drafts last time around, but I still actually brought him in for the game week. And that's because we got the news pretty late on in the in the game week that Callum Wilson was going to be out for the game and uh, Isak would most likely play 90 minutes. Eddie Howell has previously said that Isak can't play 90 minutes in his system, but Isak clearly showed that he c- can do that in the last game where he scored two goals. He even had an assist that was taken away because of some stupid uh, offside rule. But he looked amazing for the full 90 minutes, took a penalty. He's the penalty taker for them, especially with Callum Wilson off the pitch. And he just looks so good that he can't possibly be benched. And for his price, for Newcastle's fixtures going forward, they don't have a blanking every 32 even. They have great uh, double game week coming up, at least a decent double game week, Man United at home. Man United have been pretty... Sh- pretty terrible away against um against bigger teams um defensively especially so that might not bode well for Shaw but they do have a double game week anyways but Isak is just so good lately and uh he's such a top class player that I think he's the best forward to own currently and that's also because the premium forwards that have been the best this whole season Holland and Kane are do, don't do not have a double game week fixture in this game week but that still doesn't stop us from having Erling Haaland in the squad. We have taken out Kane. Spoilers for uh, further on in the in the video. We had Kane last week pretty highly as well, but as the week went along last time, I was kind of unsure about Kane because he's so pricey. He has really good fixtures going forward. We'll talk more about the Spurs fixtures as well pretty soon. But it's just when it comes to Kane versus Haaland, we all know Haaland has been a step above Kane this whole season. He's sort of put Kane in his shadow. And with the fixtures he has coming up, Liverpool at home, even this week, Liverpool at home is, is a way better fixture for me than Everton away for uh, for Kane. And then Southampton away and Leicester at home as well. Really great fixtures for Man City. Only thing with Man City is, or with Holland especially, is that he is he has like a slight knock. He didn't play for Norway in, uh, against Spain. He's not going to play for Norway against Georgia as well. Um, I'm recording this before before that match. But uh, he he is sort of an injury doubt against Liverpool, but I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. I think you don't necessarily have to bench boost this week, but if Holland is fit, you could potentially bench boost with the squad. But I don't think that injury is that important because I think game week 30 and 31 and beyond that is where you need Holland in your squad. A lot of people will bring him in in game week 30 for Tony, but I think if given the choice... Most of us would have him in, in our squad right now, and that's why he is in this weekly wildcard squad or weekly wildcard draft. Moving on, we have the second defender. That is Ben Chilwell. He didn't get any points. He got a blank last time, two points, but he looked really dangerous, had the best, best expected goals involvement for Chelsea against Everton, and he's just looked so good offensively, especially since uh, they switched to a wing-back system again. He's playing left wing-back. He's getting into the box, getting a lot of chances, creating a lot of chances as well. And it's only a matter of time before he gets a lot of points as well. Chilwell, he has gotten a lot of points lately, but not last game week. But he's going to bounce straight back again, I, I'm pretty sure of it. And uh, and yeah, Chelsea, as you can see, great fixtures. Two home matches in the double game week. Aston Villa at home and Liverpool at home. Not the easiest of position, but still, it's at home. And Chelsea have looked so good defensively uh, lately as well. Wolverhampton away and Brighton at home. Decent fixtures as well. 
Jet Will is just a really good pick at the moment. So, so yeah, he makes a lot of sense. We go with another Brighton player. They are not quite as important to have as they were a couple game weeks ago. But Brighton do have a really good double game week fixture with Brentford at home and Bournemouth away. It's just after that they have kind of bad fixtures right now. And a lot of us were hoping that Brighton would have a double game week fixture in game week 31. As you can see, they play Chelsea away in uh, game week 31, which is a difficult fixture. But if they had Newcastle, I think away, I think it was Newcastle away uh, in, uh, as a double game week in that fixture, then Brighton players would be in much more demand. I know a lot of people have three Brighton players already, but in terms of the ideal squad to have right now, I don't think they are as essential. But I still think you should have at least one of the, their midfielders, potentially even two, because they are so cheap and they just create so many chances. They won 5-0 in the cup, albeit against a lesser side from a lower division. But but still, they, they look so, so, so good offensively. And uh, and yeah, I think McAllister just is the best of the bunch because he's on uh, penalties. He takes free kicks as well from close range. He can score a free kick here and there. We've seen that before. And he has just amazing numbers playing as the number 10 for Brighton. And I think that's going to last. He didn't play as the number 10 in, in the cup. But I think that's more just because um, the Serbia wanted to rotate some players. And uh, and that makes means that McAllister has to drop down. He's still got an assist. So he's still a, an amazing pick. I still prefer him over Mitoma and uh, March. Slightly. I, I, I say slightly. But I, I pretty much prefer him uh, over them by by some distance at least but anyways McAllister's really good still Brighton tough fixtures Spurs away and Chelsea away I still think they have a shot at, at winning both those matches but they are sort of more difficult matches so that's why it's a bit more tempered when it comes to Brighton players currently than it was uh, not that long ago but still great players to own McAllister was the seventh pick last week he is the one two three four five six seven eighth pick this week so he's still he's still a really good player to own and uh, and yeah Especially now with this upcoming fixture as well. Or the upcoming fixtures in Game Week 29. Kieran Trippier as well. Number 5 pick last week. He's dropped down a bit. And that's because Newcastle still haven't looked the best defensively lately. I was kind of hoping they would uh, bounce back properly. But they still conceded last time as well against uh, Nottingham Forest. Um, so yeah, Trippier. He's still just an amazing player to own in FPL. He's been amazing on the whole season and I don't really have to talk that much more about him because like I said Newcastle with Isak they have great fixtures Trippier is nailed on to play it's on all set pieces creates a lot of chances we all know what Trippier is worth so yeah he's a, he's an easy pick next up we got Purvis Estepinian yet another player who survives from last week like I said with McAllister Brighton not as good lately in terms of or not as good going forward in terms of their fixtures and especially defensively it's a bit suspect and his opinion also has like the the issue of um, the international break that he's uh, he's gone he's playing in australia i think pretty close to uh, the game week 29 deadline i still think he's going to make it back for for brentford but even if he doesn't bournemouth away isn't the worst fixture to have as a single game of fixture uh, even if you bench boost so I think Estepinian is just looking so good for Brighton. I, I've been talking about this the last few few weeks. I think Estepinian is being sort of overlooked. People are going with Dunk over him, going with the goalkeeper over him. And I think that is uh, going to be a mistake. I think Estepinian has some huge holes going forward in FPL. Uh, 12 pointers, 15 pointers. I think he has that type of ceiling as as a defender. And, and that's why I think he's important to own. But like I said, doesn't have the greatest fixtures. So that's sort of why he's further further down in this uh, projection. But still in the squad and uh, not really a doubt for me either. I think the four defenders are, are pretty pretty close and shut. Like it's, what do you say? Open and shut case. Uh, those four defenders are, are the four players. Four defenders you should, you should own. The fifth player in defense is kind of more, eh, who knows. But we'll see when we get to that player. First up, though, we have our third striker, and that is the only striker or forward that has survived from last week's uh, weekly wildcard draft, and that is uh, Kai Havertz. He scored a penalty last time. Didn't look quite as good as uh, Joao Felix, but he still had another pretty good chance as well after a chill wall cross on a header. But Havertz, playing 90 minutes, he takes penalties, and Chelsea have good fixtures, and it seems like they are on an upswing. Havertz especially as well. He's been scoring goals, even though... Some of them have been penalties lately, but he's just been looking looking like uh, a really important player for Chelsea and uh, Chelsea, a good reason for Chelsea's uptake in form. And yeah, like I said with Chilwell, 
great fixtures. There are some other striker candidates as well, forward candidates as well. I'll talk more about at the end when we have the full squad. But I think Havertz uh, also, I think he for for the price, he he is in sort of that same price range as the other options. But I think with the penalties and uh, and Chelsea uh, being a top six side, at least on paper, <laughs> I think he's he's the best option out of the out of the rest. Uh, especially since we don't have the money to have uh, Kane as well in this team, sadly. Next up, Bukayo Saka. He uh, was left out last uh, last uh, game week for Martinelli. I had more faith in Martinelli, but then Saka showed why why he's so good, why he's the star man for Arsenal. He uh, he's on penal- penalties as well, like a lot of players in uh, in, <laughs> in this squad. Uh, but that's not why he scored a lot of points last time. He just showed why he's such an efficient player. He scores from pretty much every angle, and I, th- I think I, I got to just admit that I have sort of been underrating him this whole season. And sure, they don't have a double game week, but I still think, and they do have like, ah, they still have decent fixtures, but even if you're free at M32 and he has Leeds, only a single game week in uh, game week 29, and then he has Liverpool away, and then he has West Ham away, those fixtures are still good, and Arsenal have shown that they are, they are such a good team, and they can score goals against anyone. So, I still think having one Arsenal player is uh, is more than viable to have in uh, in FPL going forward. So, why not make it Saka? I mean, he's he's more expensive than uh, Martinelli and those guys, but I think with Odegaard's recent form into FPL, not getting a lot of goals or assists, he is the only one assured of a start for Arsenal. Don't really know about Jesus' playing time. Don't really know about uh, Martinelli and Trossard's playing time. So Saka is just the safest option for Arsenal. And uh, and that's why he makes the squad over the other Arsenal players. And I think he is... he Arsenal Arsenal should have... You should have at least one Arsenal player in your squad, I think. And Saka is the one to have out of all the Arsenal players. So that's why he makes the squad. Next up, we have the final defender as well. And it is Pedro Porro. Does not have a double gaming fixture. He has Everton away. But he showed last game why he's... He's so good. He scored a really nice goal. Just uh, top bins in the near post, on the near post. Or he Gabbiadini did it, like I, I tend to say, because Gabbiadini scored a, a screamer like that against West Ham back in the day. So anyways, that's off topic. Uh, Poro just looks really good. And now Emerson Real is injured as well, so there's no worry about his place in the team either, even though they sacked Conte. And they have Stellini in now as the manager for the rest of the season. Poro is going to play sort of the same way Super attacking wing back, and even though they don't have a double game of fixture, for the price of 4.8, Pedro Porro is just such an amazing pick for a pretty good Spurs side, at least every now and then. <laughs> but in the matches against, for example, Everton and, and Bournemouth, as you can see, in the next three game weeks, Pedro Porro can get, like I said with Estepinian, the, the 15 to 12 pointers. And I like to go for the defenders that I feel like can get the goals and assists on top of the clean sheets and get those massive hauls. So... This is sort of like a big at the back. Uh, I, I guess it's still a pretty cheap defense, but there are a lot of offensive options there, and and I quite like it even actually. So so yeah. As you can see, there are still no goalkeepers because I think there are not that many standout goalkeepers currently at the moment. We'll get to what I think is the best goalkeeper right now, and that is still Kepa Rizabalaga, the Chelsea goalkeeper. I've been mentioning this with Havertz and Chilwell as well. I think they have. Good fixtures and I think they are doing really well lately. Kepa as well, starting goalkeeper for Spain now because because of his form this season and uh and yeah he's he's just been the best goalkeeper to have in FL this this year in any year with a lot of like low goalkeeper scores. I looked at the number one overall ranking uh, currently in FL and he like me had like 11 12 straight game weeks at the start of the season without a goalkeeper return. So just having someone dependable we wouldn't say that about Kepa Rizabalaga the last three or four years, but now he is like one of the most dependable goalkeepers to have, and uh, that's why I think he's the best goalkeeper to have as well. Like I said with Shaw earlier, I think he's preferable over De Gea. I mean, both Shaw and Kepa, because I think Shaw is more essential to have, really. But if you don't have Shaw, if you if you need a goalkeeper instead, then maybe you could go with De Gea, but I, th- I think you should leave that spot open for Shaw, because he is the most important player to own uh, in, in defense currently. Finally, we have another new player, and that is Everson. This is only just a replacement for Danny Ward. We'll get to that 
in the next screen as well. But Danny Ward lost his place. Everson got to play in his uh, in his place, and uh, he's even cheaper, and uh, he's probably a better goalkeeper as well. But the reason why I go with a Leicester goalkeeper is because they have great fixtures, and they also have. Um, is also super cheap, so you you really want to save up for uh, for your squad going forward. There are no ch- Liverpool players in this team, but you're going to want Liverpool players pretty soon. They have some difficult fixtures now. They have a double game week fixture in game week 29, but that's against Man City and Chelsea, and then they have Arsenal in game week 30. But after that, Liverpool will be super important done. So I'm sure there's going to be Liverpool players in the weekly wildcard draft going forward. Didn't have room for any one of those uh, just yet because they are really expensive. But that's why you should have players like Everson. You should have some some cheaper options like the Brighton midfielders, like for example Pedro Porro or Isak even, who's who's kind of cheap for for a forward. You need to have those kinds of players to make room for your Fernandes, your Salas, your your more expensive players. Hold on, all those guys, even potentially Trent and Robertson eventually. So. I don't buy into this. I've, I've heard people make the argument that, like, oh, you don't need squad value, you don't need team value. Yes, you do, because you're going to want Man City players, Liverpool players, Man United players, and Arsenal players, and those are the most expensive players to have um, in your squad. Chelsea players as well. So, so yeah. Anyways, as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Is it six new players? Everson, Poro, Shaw, Fernandez, Saka, Holan. He's like seven, seven new players, and that means seven players have dropped out as well on the list. And you can see those players here and their positions last week. I'm going to go from top to bottom, the players that have dropped out. First guy up, Hurricane, like I said earlier, he sort of had to drop out because of uh, Holland. I just prefer Holland currently, and I didn't do that last, uh, last game week when he didn't play, obviously. Kane, I had him number three last week. Like I said, I think that was a bit too high because he's now dropped out of the squad entirely but Kane is still a great option to have but it's just I feel like I need to spread the money around more to make room for players eventually um, in my squad that's that's why I, I'm thinking like that um, so yeah I think you're going to need Salah pretty soon so leaving some money in the bank for Salah is, is probably the way to go and that's why you don't really can't have Kane on top of having Holland and those guys I also prefer Saka over Kane for the next three game weeks, uh, even though Kane has that enticing game week 31 fixture, but Saka is also someone you can sell to get Salah as well, and you can't do that with Kane, so so that's sort of why Kane has dropped out. Mitoma, like I said previously, I was hoping that, or a lot of people were hoping that Brighton would have a double game week fixture in game week 31, and that's sort of why he made the score last week. He, uh, he's got a goal return last, uh, last game week as well for, for Brighton, but... I think Brighton are not as essential to have before game week 34 uh, now. As you can see from the fixtures, they don't have the best fixtures, so I think you can survive with two Brighton players until game week 34, but by that point, you need triple Brighton because that's when they're going to have a lot of double game weeks. And uh, they're going to have double game week 34, double game week 37, and probably double game week 36 as well, so they're going to have so many double game weeks at the end of the season. But for now, you can survive with just two, and that's how Mitoma sort of drops out. Ivan Tony got a stupid yellow card, so he has nine yellow cards. It's really close to a suspension. We don't know what the betting thing is well. Doesn't have the greatest fixtures going forward, so that's why he drops out. Martinelli, he was dropped out just because I prefer Saka, even for the higher price, because Saka has shown that he's the more explosive option. It's not that important in terms of Saka versus Martinelli, because you're not going to captain Saka, probably. But potentially against West Ham in game week uh, 31, you might captain him, but then again, you also have Holland against Leicester at home. So unless Holland is looking like a rotation risk because of Champions League, you could live without Saka, but I, I still think Saka is just the safest option, really, especially with the playing time for Martinelli with Gabriel Jesus coming back into full fitness. Martinelli sort of doesn't make as much sense in the squad anymore. Manny Cash, kind of hard done by. I slightly preferred Pedro Porro over Nasnola defender. Uh, Tyron Minks has been really good in terms of FPL as well. He got a assist or a goal, assist last time, 12 pointer. So uh, Minks could have been in the squad, but I just prefer uh, Poro going forward. Um, just throughout the season, I, I feel like Poro is going to be a better option than the Aston Villa defenders, just slightly. So, so yeah, that's why I prefer Poro over Cash. Same goes for Botman. Again, this goes to the the Wigan 31 that we didn't get or. Potentially, we're probably not going to get with Newcastle and Brighton. 
those players are not as important, so that's why Bachman drops out. And then finally, Danny Ward drops out because, well, he was dropped as the number one starting goalkeeper for Leicester, so it doesn't make sense any, anymore in, in a squad either. But yeah, uh, last week's, or I should say two weeks ago, last uh, last game week's uh, well, weekly wildcard drafts, we got some nice comments on YouTube, and one of them was asking for some maverick picks some differential picks at the end of uh, this video and uh, i said i would happily happily do that so that's what i'm going to do was what i'm going to do now so especially for those of you who don't have a free hitting gimmick 32 this is going to be useful because these are the types of players you should uh, should target rather than your McAllisters and and those guys um currently you can get someone like Said ben rama west ham have a really good uh, double gimmick fixture in gimmick 29 I think Ben Rama is the better pick out of him and Bowen because he's on penalties. He's cheaper. Sure, his playing time isn't quite as assured, but he's been West Ham, one of West Ham's best players this season, better than Bowen. And uh, and yeah, for the cheaper price and on penalties, I think he's just a better option than Bowen, really. Especially if you're considering just the short term. You also have, I've, I've mentioned Brighton as well. And another reason why I only have two Brighton players in the squad is because I still kind of... I'm kind of interested in Evan Ferguson as well because he's such a cheap option compared to other the other um, forwards. So he's also a really good differential option if you want to go with someone else. Obviously not if you don't have a free hit, but I think he's also someone who could potentially replace Havertz in this lineup. You also have guys like uh, Ollie Watkins who's like a standout pick as a striker, but I stuck with Havertz since I, I picked him last week and he outscored Watkins, so that's why I picked Havertz over Watkins, but... Anyways, I think um, Evan Ferguson might be one of the cheaper strikers or forwards that might be useful going forward. I also think Brenton Johnson as well, if he is fit to play, he has such an amazing double gimmick uh, in Game 29. He's also like a memory pick to have uh, as a forward. And then uh, defensively, I've mentioned Mings already. I've also mentioned West Ham's fixtures and uh, Emerson, he's 4.0 really cheap option if you don't have any money left uh, for your defenders if you want to downgrade someone like Gabriel or Sinchenko to someone cheaper to me to get more money in your squad then uh, I think Emerson is is the best option he's he's the only like 4.0 option that has a double game week and they also have a, a fixture in 32 as well West Ham so he's he's another decent option finally also I have two players who don't have a double game week, and that is Wilfred Saha, first and foremost. They have really good fixtures, Crystal Palace, from now until the end of the season. They have a new manager. Uh, they're going to get Roy Hodgson, but Saha has performed under Roy Hodgson before. And um, yeah, considering they have really good fixtures, I think Saha is, is someone who's going to be really overlooked. It would be super typical for Saha to play really well now in Game 29, Game 30, and 31. And then when everyone uses their free hit in Game 32 to get him in, he's going to blank. So that's my prediction for Saha. But I, th I think he might be doing really well in the next few game weeks. But they don't have a double. And Crystal Palace have been kind of terrible lately. So people are overlooking him. But I think Saha is, is looking really good. Especially the last game, he looked, uh, he looked pretty dangerous and could have scored against Arsenal even. So, so yeah, Saha is another great option. And uh, finally, I had someone else in mind as well. Uh, I can't think of him <laughs> just at this moment. So, uh, so yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. Those are some Maverick picks. And, uh, and yeah, that is uh, the whole weekly wildcard uh, drafts and the full squad. These are the players I think are the most, that are the most essential to have. And, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it for, for now. If you would like this video, if you find it amusing, if you found it in informative or something like that then uh, please leave it a like if you want to and uh, subscribe to the channel if uh, if, you, if you're old or if you're new or whatever they the youtubers tend to say uh, i don't know why every youtuber says that subscribe if you're new why not subscribe if you have been watching for a while and haven't subscribed i don't know but that is uh, me rambling again anyways uh, that's uh, that's it for me and um yeah goodbye